Hey everybody, this video is called The Choice, and tonight we're going to continue our pass-through study here in the book of Deuteronomy, where we're going to look at the call to return to the Lord. In Deuteronomy chapter 30 here, verse 1, it says, Now it shall come to pass, when all these things come upon you, the blessing and the curse which I have set before you, and you call them to mind among all the nations where the Lord your God drives you. So the rejection of God by Israel and of Israel by God, the subsequent dispersion, were not the end of God's story for God's people. In Moses, he carefully explained the blessings and cursings in the prior chapters 27 and 28 that would come upon a obedient and disobedient Israel. And Moses knew that all these things would come upon Israel and Israel saw blessing during the time of reign of King David and King Solomon. And then they saw cursing at the time of the fall of Jerusalem. And God knew that they would be scattered and exiled. In verse uh, 2 through 5 says, And you return to the Lord your God and obey his voice. According to all that I command you today, you and your children with all your heart with all your soul that the Lord your God will bring you back from captivity and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where the Lord your God has scattered you. If any of you are driven out of the farthest parts under heaven, from there the Lord your God will gather you and from there he will bring you. Then the Lord your God will bring you to the land which your fathers possessed and you shall possess it. He will prosper you and multiply you more than your fathers. So as Israel would return to the Lord, God would bless them and God would bring them back from captivity and show compassion on them. In this passage, for those who are dispensationalists, they see the modern regathering of Israel fulfilling this promise rather than the return of of something that already happened during the Babylonian exile. And they argue today that Israel is populated from Jews from every country in the world. And the breadth of this promise is important because God repeats the idea in verse 4. And in the return of the Babylonian exile, Israel was still a bondsman of the Persians. And Dispensationalists, they argue that Israel returned from the Babylonian exile. The Jewish community was small, weak, and poor. And today, the Jewish community is large, strong, and prosperous more than ever before in biblical history. In verse uh, 16, or verse 6, I mean, it says, And the Lord your God will circumcise your heart and the heart of your descendants to love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your mind. So who will circumcise your heart? Would, would it be themselves circumcising their heart? No, it says in verse 6, the Lord your God will circumcise your heart. And the work of God in the innermost being of the individual is the true salvation that grants a new will to obey him in place of the former spiritual insensitivity insensitivity and stubbornness and this new heart would allow the israelite to love the lord their god and obey the greatest commandment to love the lord their god with all their heart their soul and their mind wholeheartedly and that's the essential feature of the new covenant in verse 7 through 10 it says also the lord your god will put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you who persecuted you and you will again obey the voice of the Lord and do all his commandments, which I command you today. The Lord your God will make you abound in all the work of your hand and the fruit of your body and in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your land for good. For the Lord will again rejoice over you for good as he rejoiced over your fathers. If you obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which are written in this book of the law. And if you turn to the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. So the curses that had fallen on Israel 
because of disobedience would come upon the nations that have enslaved the, the Jews. And the judgment of God would come upon those who cursed the physical seed of Abraham in fulfillment of Genesis 12, verse 1 through 3. And with a new heart under the new covenant, then Israel would obey the commandments of the Lord. And likewise with us, we will not obey the Lord's commands until we are given a new heart, until our hearts are circumcised. And this would result in the Lord's blessing, which would bring greater prosperity than Israel has ever previous, previously experienced. And here is a renewed enforcement of the indispensable fruit of salvation and another echo of the constant theme of this book. And dispensationalists, they see these verses as prophetic of the millennial kingdom. In verse 11 through 14, it says, For this commandment which I have commanded you today is not too mysterious for you, nor is it far off. It is not in heaven that you should say, Who will ascend into heaven for us and bring it to us, that we may hear and do it? Nor is it beyond the sea that you should say, Who will go over the sea for us and bring it to us, that we may hear it and do it? But the word is very near you in your mouth and in your heart that you may do it. So after remembering the failures of the past and the prospects of the future, Moses earnestly admonished the people to make the right choice. He's really encouraging them to make the right choice. And the issue facing them was to enjoy salvation and blessing by loving God so wholeheartedly that they would willingly walk in obedience to his word. And the choice was simple, yet it was profound. And it was stated in simple terms so that they could understand and grasp what God expected of them. And although God had spoken from heaven, he had spoken through Moses in word. Every person could understand. God didn't give them, you know, mystery language that they would not be able to understand. And they did not have to search at some point beyond the sea. And the truth was there through Moses. Now it was in their hearts and in their minds. And all the truth necessary for choosing to love God and obey God and therefore avoid dis disobedience and cursing, they had heart, they had heard and known. And Paul goes on later on and quotes verses 12 through 14 here in Romans 10, which we're going to look at a little bit. In verse uh, 15 through 18 says, See, I have set before you today life and good, death and evil, that I may command you today to love the Lord your God, to walk in his ways, to keep his commandments, his statutes, and his judgments, that you may live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land which you go to possess. But if your heart turns away so that you do not hear and are drawn away and worship other gods and serve them, I announce you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not prolong your days in the land which which you cross over the Jordan to go in and possess. So here Moses is pinpointing the choice to love and obey God is life and good, but to disobey God is to reject God, and that is death and evil. And if they chose to love God and obey his word, then they could expect to enjoy the blessings that Moses already told them back in chapter 28. But if they refused to love God and obey, they would be severely and immediately punished. In verse 19 through 20, wrapping up the chapter, says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing, Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live, that you may love the Lord your God, that you may obey his voice, and that you may cling to him, for he is your life in the length of your days, and that you may dwell in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, to give them. So here, Moses, he's forcing the decision. He's really encouraging Israel on the plains of Moab before God and man 
to choose and not just believe in God, but to love God in the life that was available through the new covenant. And sadly, as you're going to see in the next, uh, in the next verses in the chapter here, verse 16 through 18 and 27 through 29, it's going to show us that it showed us that Israel failed to call to follow the call on the right choice. And Israel had to choose the choice before them uh, between life and death. And Moses pled with them to choose life. But as you go on through the Bible, you're going to see Israel does not pick the right pathway. And so to wrap up here, we looked at the restoration for a repentant Israel. And we saw God's promise to gather Israel into the promised land. And we see Israel left with the choice. And we see Moses encourage them to obey. And Moses, he spoke of a spiritual regathering of Israel. And Israel had the capability to keep the covenant. In verse, uh, chapter, Romans chapter 10, verse 1 through 13. And, you know, to clarify in Deuteronomy 30, it's not talking about the New Testament salvation. That's talking about covenant. So don't get them mixed up, you know, with free will and all that. So Romans chapter 10, verse 1 through 13, it says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God but not according to knowledge. For they are ignorant of God's righteousness and seeking to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted to the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness which is of the law. The man does those things shall live by them, but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. Do not say in your heart who will ascend to heaven, that is, to bring down Christ down from above, or who will descend into the abyss. That is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is, the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scriptures say, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction, distinction from Jew or Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So just like Moses we see later in the New Testament that the Apostle Paul says that the message of salvation is plain and understandable. And Moses and Paul had a zeal for Israel's salvation. That's how they are alike. And in verse 7, that's where Paul quoted from Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 12 through 14, as he said, Or who will descend into the abyss? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. And that's going to wrap up this uh, video here. And we're going to look next tomorrow at the final instructions of Moses as Moses is getting to the end of his ministry. So I hope you have a great rest of your night. God bless and thank you for the patience with these allergies. And I'm looking forward to allergy season being past us. God bless.